Hi, Nicola Ferrier here. I'm a TME for the service provider business unit at Cisco, and more precisely, I'm working on NCS 5500 products. This video is another episode of our lab series, and you can take a look at the test we recorded so far in the playlist. Also, in the description, you will find a link to xrdocs.io where all the details will be available. In the last episode, my colleague Pratyusha demonstrated with a large test bed what is the NDR of a 36 by 100 gigi SC line card powered by Jericho Plus ASIX. NDR stands for non-drop rate, and it does represent the minimum packet size you can transmit on all ports, line rate, simultaneously. Let's try to dig a bit deeper to understand what's behind this NDR number, just after the intro. Having two chassis and 288 ports wired is a very impressive setup, but you can actually demonstrate the same thing with just 18 ports and two NPUs. We wired a full line card, that means a snake of 36 ports, but half of them would have been enough for the demonstration. In this topology, we make sure that traffic is not locally routed and always transiting through the fabric. Today, we will explain you why you reach a line rate with packet size above 130 bytes, and also why you will have a short dip between 230 and 278 bytes. But we won't have drops at this packet size if you slightly reduce the interface bandwidth. The last test will demonstrate it's happening at the NPU level, and it's not a port limitation. If you do the math, we have 9 ports per NPU, and each Jericho Plus can treat 800 35 million packets per second. That should give us 92.7 Mpps per 100 GB port, but that's not what we measure. If we generate traffic at 129 bytes, just below the NDR, we receive 83.5 million packets per second. So how can we explain this inconsistency? A snake topology is actually not ideal to measure with precision the NDR. On these routers, you have 9 ports per NPU. Each NPU is made of two cores, so logically, one core will have 5 ports, while the other will have 4. So this show command can be used to display the port allocation. 100 gigi 0600 is NPU 0 core 1, same thing for port 1, and port 3 is assigned to NPU 0 core 0. With a snake, the NDR will just show the lowest performance between core 0 and core 1. Each core is capable of 417.5 million packets per second. Divided by 5, it's 83.5 Mbps per 100 GB port, which is indeed what we measured. The performance of the four other ports would have been 104 million packets per second, but it's something we cannot demonstrate with this topology. Now let's take a look at this dip between 230 bytes and 278 bytes. First, let's see if we can reproduce that in our lab. We start with 229 bytes per packet, no drop. Then we try with 279 bytes and the same. But indeed, with 278, we notice drops on the traffic generator. And it's also the same for 230 bytes. To understand this behavior, we need to talk about the way packets are split in cells when they are transmitted to the fabric. The cell size is variable, from 64 bytes to 256 bytes. And we don't support the transport of multiple small packets in a single cell, something we used to call superframing in the ASR 9000 world. Internally, the system will add headers that will be used in the pipeline by the packet processor and the traffic manager. Total, it creates an overhead of 27 bytes. That's why a 229 byte packet will be transmitted in a single cell, while a 230 bytes packet will be split in two cells. While we increase the packet size, the PPS is getting smaller and the impact is no longer noticeable after 200. 78 bytes. That explains the 8% impact on the line rate performance, but in the lab we have seen sometimes that it can go up to 20% or more, and it's because of a cascading effect. We can check in the graphical show command what are the reject reasons of the ENQ discarded packets. It displays FADT, its fair adaptative tail drop. Take a look at the blog post to understand more about this mechanism. After several seconds, the loss increases, and we can see now IDR DRAM rejects in the show comments. We verify with these other show comments that indeed we have drops related to the DRAM. 
what we experience here is really only relevant in a lab environment where we are able to maintain this 900 gigabit per second of constant stream with the same packet size. Let's see the step of this cascading effect. Packet is received, but fabric is congested. It generates a back pressure message to the ingress NPU, which will now evict the particular VOQ to the DRAM. Since all the generated traffic is pushed to DRAM, we eventually saturate the links to this external buffer. And that's the IDR drawer presence we are seeing here. I want to insist one more time that we are providing all these details to explain what can be seen in lab. In no manner, it represents a realistic scenario, simply because you cannot get more than 90% of this particular packet size on all the ports of the NPU at the exact same moment. I said 90%, so let's try to see if the problem is reproducible with 256 bytes and 90% light rate. So we start with line rate, 256 bytes, and we check that indeed we have drops. Okay, now reducing the traffic generator to 90%, no drop anymore. In this last test, I changed the configuration, and now I directly route the port 0 and the port 35. Now, they are both part of the same VRF1, so we verify that we don't have any packet size limitations between these two ports only. We start with 64 bytes packets, no drop, no packet move to DRAM either, and we show the same with 256 bytes packets, which is the middle of the deep range that we detailed earlier. Same results, no drop. Okay, so that concludes this test on the packet size. Let's hope it was informative. Thanks for watching and see you soon.